Today we're exploring Washington DC during a very special time of the year. For a few days in early spring, Japanese Yoshino cherry trees gifted by Tokyo's mayor in 1912, well, they bloom, giving the whole area, particularly Tidal Basin, a unique look during this time of the year. It has been my mom's lifelong dream to see it, and we happen to time it perfectly this time. This is also the unofficial symbolic beginning of our Lewis and Clark trip to the West, since the whole thing was Thomas Jefferson's idea. Join us as we explore our nation's capital. I'm riding, 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 riding in my RV, my RV wherever I want to be. Because I'm free in my RV. We're meeting up with longtime viewers and friends Jim and Paula. You may know him as Jim from DC in the YouTube Friday chat, and he happens to be a DC native. And he's offered to let us park at his condo. He's gonna give us a tour of his hometown, so let's do it. This is Arena Stage at the Mead Center for American Theater. Founded in 1850, one of the first non-profit theaters in the United States and the first regional theater to transfer a production to Broadway. The current renovation dates to 2010, surrounding the stages into a glass curtain wall and incorporating them into a larger building. It is actually like a building inside a building. This neighborhood, Southwest Waterfront. Since the cherry blossoms are going to be the main theme of our visit here, first, Jim and Paula are going to take us to the local spot, the one the tourists don't know about. That's an old cherry grove right there. This is an artificial island called Haynes Point, separated from the mainland on this side by the Washington Channel, and located at the confluence of the Anacostia and Potomac rivers, where the locals come to bike, enjoy the scenery, and play golf. Yeah, the whole thing is like a huge golf course. Most of it, anyway. Oh wow, chopper over the War College is perfect. There goes Marine One. Yeah, I have a thing for helicopters. Actually, Aircraft of all kinds and DC being the main headquarters of the federal American government, it's definitely the place to see all kinds, all the time. But now we're gonna take a quick break. And we'll be back in a minute with more choppers, cherries and monuments. I want to thank Ritual for sponsoring this episode, and I've been taking Ritual vitamins for a few months, you know, to fill certain gaps in my diet, and now they have this new product. And we all know lasting habit takes time and consistency. And Ritual is giving you 20% off your first month, so you can start a habit that lasts. And they recently launched their Essential Protein Daily Shakes to support maintenance of lean muscle mass and to promote a healthy, active aging for everyone, not just athletes. They have an 18 plus product, a 50 plus product, and one for pregnancy and postpartum. And I'll let you guess which one I'm taking. But I want you to know it contains all nine essential amino acids, providing a complete profile that helps to build lean muscle mass, satisfy my appetite, and support bone health. Each shake contains 20 grams of vegan pea protein and choline to support brain health. Very important. And also important what it doesn't contain. It has no added sugar, no major allergens, artificial sweeteners, or colors. It is sweetened with fermented sugar cane and monk fruit. It's fully traceable. USA grown peas, Madagascar direct from farmer vanilla beans. And now you can get a massive 20% off your first month of Ritual by using the code you see on screen or go to the link in the description and help fuel your body right. Now, if you'll excuse me. All kinds of things happening in this town, and that definitely looks like the presidential chopper Marine One.
Well, here we are in DC with he, he, he's like pulling away by that with Jim from DC. Hi. <laughs> and my mom back there, my mom finally being able to see the cherry blossoms after um, how many years? 1958. How many 63? years is that? 63. 63 years. And uh, this is not Tidal Basin proper like where all the tourists are, but this is like Tidal Basin for the locals. And uh, we have like a, you know, a tunnel of uh, cherry uh, cherry trees. Unseasonably cold even for DC this time of the year. Uh, but, you know, we're managing. Look at that. These are gonna be gone in less than less than a week. They're gonna be gone. And uh, here we are. The, this is not the Potomac proper, it's the Washington Channel. But, I mean, we're gonna be driving around most of the day, so I'll show you the rest. No way to welcome a Floridian to DC with this weather. What are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> we're preserving the trees I in know, the cold. I know, I know. You were preserving it so, so they would still have, uh, uh, you know, some some flowers on them by the time I arrived. I don't. Let's move to the other side of the island passing by the confluence of the Anacostia and the Potomac. And that would be the Robert E. Lee Mansion across the river, in Arlington, because we are now on the Potomac River, Virginia on the other side. And there's a plane landing at Ronald Reagan National Airport. And I love taking these types of shots with the long lens of planes, landing, and things like that. Well, we found the one pink cherry tree in the whole of Washington, D.C. <laughs> so, mom's gonna take a picture now. Yep, mom's a tree hogger, all right. Well, this right here is a, a fragment of a column belonging to a monument that is in Havana, Cuba, you know, my birthplace. And uh, it's a monument to the USS Maine that exploded in the Havana Bay back in 1898, if I'm correct. And actually, it was the beginning of the Spanish-American War. Uh, after that, uh, ship blew up uh, the Havana Harbor. And that monument in Havana was built in 1926. Same year my dad was born. So it's here, it's, and nobody really knows it is here. I just found it by chance, by, by searching Google Maps. So, the more you know, right? <laughs> We're frozen here, Jim. We're frozen. And we are now at Tidal Basin, the area where all the tourists come to see the cherry blossoms. There's even a festival going on. And there's Dr. Martin Luther King across the basin. We'll be visiting him tomorrow, actually. Now, Dr. King again with the Lincoln Memorial as well. Here's a profile of Thomas Jefferson. Washington Memorial at the center of it all. And the Capitol building. What a great vantage point this is. Let's pay Mr. Jefferson a visit because he is actually the reason there was a Lewis and Clark and an expedition to the West and all that. The 
Jefferson Memorial is precisely aligned with the White House, so the president can actually see the monument directly from the residence. That's pretty cool. Well, greetings everybody from our nation's capital, Washington DC. And this right here is Thomas Jefferson. This is the Jefferson Memorial, and as you know, this is kind of the beginning of our Lewis and Clark road trip, in which we're gonna follow in their footsteps. But it was here with Jefferson that it all began. Of course, Jefferson made the Louisiana Purchase in 1803. Of course, the, the, the Lewis and Clark trip had been in the works uh, for far longer than that, but then in 1804, they departed, and from 1804 to 1808, that's when they uh, basically discovered the final frontier at the time, which was the West. And this is that classic view, and of course I'm gonna zoom in, the Washington Memorial and the White House right next to it, and, and all this was designed so the President of the United States could see the Jefferson Memorial from the, from his, uh, from the Oval Office there, basically. So, um, yeah, I think that this would be a fitting beginning to our epic road trip. Not as epic as Lewis and Clark's, of course. We have more technology nowadays, but this is the beginning. And I want to thank Jim for giving us a tour of our nation's capital. Thank you, Jim. You're welcome. The next time, just turn on the furnace a little. <laughs> you know, it's this is not this is not. <laughs> Not for, usual for Washington <laughs> no. to be freezing in March. The original plan was to walk all the way around the Tidal Basin, but first, it is a lot bigger than it looks on the map. And it is uncomfortably cold. I think it feels like 25 Fahrenheit or minus 4 Celsius with the wind chill and all that. We have to go somewhere and thaw. Looking to the west, over the Potomac. That's the Pentagon right there. Here we have the oldest municipal fish market in the nation, in this very nice area called the Wharf. We must return when it is warmer. Here we are by the Washington Nationals Park. One of our local IPA. Well, here we are at Atlas Brewery. Washington and the what's the name of the neighborhood? Navy Yard. Navy Yard. And here we are, we're gonna have some pizza and some uh, I'm Red having Coast. the local IPA because you know I'm, I'm an IPA guy. And here's Jim and this brewery has a peculiarity that it is mostly powered with solar power, so that's a good thing. Hmm, Capital Skyline Hotel. That's where we stayed back in 2012. Here we have the Botanical Garden, the National Museum of the American Indian, and Hirschhorn undergoing renovations. This brown building would be the Smithsonian Castle. Well, since this trip is kind of, well, very historic in nature, I think it would be a, another good place to start by the Smithsonian Museum of American History. So, let's step inside. Yeah, it's closed on Wednesday and Thursday yeah. now. So here we go. 
I always love the Smithsonian museums. And by the way, all the Smithsonians, free. We pay for them. The main artifact here at the museum is the Star Spangled Banner, which is behind that wall and they do not allow photography. And then we are greeted by a shirtless George Washington in a sculpture that evokes that of a Greek god. They have some exhibits about the Revolutionary War, the Constitution, but nothing, not even a footnote about Lewis and Clark. This was one of the earliest steam locomotives, dating back to 1831, and they have this whole America on the Move exhibit, which is very cool actually, showing all kinds of modes of transportation, beginning with ships, all kinds, but not the peculiar killboat we're looking for. That being said, it is a wonderful exhibit. I've always been fascinated by all forms of transportation. Here's the first vehicle to drive cross-country back in 1903. I saw a documentary about it once. It was quite the adventure. As you can see, who, who would have the first time they did it in a car? But I haven't been able to find the first time they did it, period. Here's the predecessor to Minitini. Yep, an early travel trailer from the 1930s. Of course, there would have to be a reference to the Mother Road, America's Main Street, also known as Route 66. Here's the only survivor of Southern Railway's PS4 class locomotives. This one, built in 1926. Jim lost his hat. We're getting hurricane force winds here in the, at the, the National Mall, which, by the way, it's not a shopping mall, it's just, they just call it a mall. <laughs> there we can see the Lincoln Memorial behind the Washington Monument. We definitely have to come back tomorrow and then in spring when it is not this cold and windy. The things I do for you guys, it feels like 25 degrees here in the National Mall, high, high winds. Jim just lost his hat. Uh, but you know, I wanted to show you our national Capitol, right there on Capitol Hill. And then on this side, we have Mom and Jim. And back there, the Washington Monument. Behind the Washington Monument is the Lincoln Memorial. Maybe we'll get to see it tomorrow, because right now, we're, we're getting out of this cold. It's, it's too cold in DC today. Here we can see in detail the different color stones used in the construction of the Washington Monument. And this is what happened. They ran out of money halfway through in 1856, and then the Civil War happened, and when they resumed construction in 1876, they got the marble from a different quarry. Little known fact, when finished in 1885, the stones looked exactly the same, but over the years, they aged differently, and now there's a visible seam.
I think we've had enough frigid fun for one day, don't you think? Tomorrow we'll come back and continue exploring. But more about that on the next episode. Until then, thank you so much for watching. And see you on the road. I'm free in my RV. Yeah, I'm riding, riding, riding. I'm riding in my RV, my RV, wherever I want to be. Cause I'm free in my RV. <laughs>